Hey Beer Geeks, I hope you're safe and well. We are coming towards the end of lockdown here in the UK, which is amazing news. And Brad and I might be able to meet, uh, not just on my porch to drink some homebrew. Mate, I can't wait. Um, I'm getting lonely. I need my beer drinking buddy back. So, uh... And my beer stash, no doubt. Um, <laughs> so it's wonderful news we can start supporting pubs and breweries and tap rooms again. But at the same time, all over the world, these pubs and breweries and tap rooms are being stripped of the support that the governments were giving them. So it's a really dangerous time to be a taproom owner, pub owner, brewery owner. And it's never been more important for us to support craft beer and support independent and ethical businesses. Now, obviously, we've been doing that through lockdown. I don't know about you, Bad. I've been, I've been buying a ton of beer. But there's lots of other ways that we can help. So we thought that we'd make a video today that will explain ways that we can help these uh, ethical businesses get through what is probably the toughest time in their history. So these are hard truths in craft beer and how to fix them. So Johnny, I think we can both agree that the obvious choice here is to buy more independent beer, but sometimes you can't do that. And um, you know, we've only got a limited amount of money in these times. So what I wanna know is how do we do the best and the most amount of good with the money that we have? The big guys at the moment are winning. There's some shocking statistics out there. So in London in 2015, pretty much 100% of the beer made in London was independent, right, in 2015. In 2020, it's, it's like 5 or 10%. It has been completely bought up or indeed destroyed by macro brewers coming in. Um, which is, you know, the exact opposite of what we feel like is happening, like this great brewing renaissance. And to, to make that even more uh, urgent, we're seeing loads of big breweries paying lots of money to support the pubs, which is great. But off the back of that, lots of them are tying up lines. They're buying equipment from these pubs that can only be used with their beer. And that's going to restrict how much beer can actually be sold by the independents. So the best thing to do is, is, is buy ethically, right? 100% mate. I mean, that's, that's the, the choice we've all got to live with. Um, do we want to be in a vibrant scene that is, is full of new small businesses that are coming in with great ideas? Or do we want it to stagnate again and become a big monster like we were at 20 years ago? So there's so many resources online for you to find out who's independent or who is acting ethically. Uh, quick Google searches will reveal all of that. But if you do have questions about who is acting independently, who is acting ethically, then do just pop them below and we should have some resources to point you to them. So that first point raises another very important point, right? If you're going to buy independent or if you're going to buy ethically and choose that tap that you know is going to support a small business, what do we do when that beer sucks? Because let's be honest, lots of craft beer is flawed or it's not properly cared for or it's not properly poured. What do we do in that situation, Brad? This is a very difficult one. And uh, I think we've all probably been there where we, we want to kind of rage at it. And we want to tell the world, Johnny, there are these, there are these apps and these websites where we can, we can leave comments about beers that we've not enjoyed. Um, and you know what? That, that lasts forever. And it can really tarnish uh, a small business. So, you know, I think we're, we're more about love here. So I think what we should probably do is, is reach out to the brewers if we can, uh, rather than leaving long-term comments on, on websites that people uh, are swayed by. And that's not to say you should be lying on review sites or anything like that. But if you're going to leave a review, make sure it's helpful, it's critical, and it's precise. We see so many reviews online that are just like, I don't like sour beer, one star. Or um, oxidised, one star. Like, if it's oxidised, you're not, it's not a fair representation of what that brewery might present. So just tell the brewer, don't, don't tell the world. I think people underestimate how important these review sites are to many breweries. Many of the really hype breweries, the breweries that we cover in the Hype Train videos, they are hyped because of these review sites because they've done well on there. But there's... 20, 30, 40,000 breweries in the, in, in the world, and many of them produce amazing beer. They're just not at the top of those review sites for whatever reason. So following on from that is a big bugbear that I have, which is when we get into craft beer, and we're guilty of this as well, you kind of assume that you know more than everybody else. And you start informing people, you start telling people, these guys are good, these guys aren't, all this kind of stuff. And you build up this hype, right? You build up this reputation that might be earned, it might not be. But at the end of the day, 
by drinking craft, we're not being more independent in our thought. Somebody else is still telling us, this is good, this is not. The designs are still going, this is trendy, this is not. So a really important hard truth in beer is that somebody told you to drink that beer. Whether you, you realise that or whether it was uh, subliminal is irrelevant. Somebody told you to. So how do we deal with that unconscious bias? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're all susceptible to it, um, whether we know it or not. So I think the thing we need to do is, if we can, we've got to try and ignore the hype. Um, we've got to do our own research and uh, we've got to take all of these websites with a pinch of salt and, um, you know, be give give stuff a fair shot, I would say, Johnny. Yeah, absolutely. I've been buying from all over the UK during lockdown and I've discovered some breweries, like a quick shout out to Cheshire Brewhouse, that I'd have never discovered, you know, during normal days. And they're absolutely fantastic without a lot of reputation online. On the flip side, I bought from a brewery that had got so much hype uh, on some forums um, and the beer, I drain poured almost all of it. So the internet doesn't necessarily know the best. I think you need to gather all the information you can and make an informed decision. Don't just go off the back of what lots of people are saying online or on those review sites. And then we get to the, the wider issues, the societal issues that craft beer thinks it's amazing at. When we did our New England documentary, we discovered some breweries doing amazing, amazing stuff. But most brewers are not. Most brewers have terrible sustainability practices. They use one-way plastic kegs. They use uh, unrecyclable malt sacks. All those, um, what are they, 10, 20, 20 kilogram malt sacks, they're not recyclable. There's millions of them just in the ground now, trillions of them probably. Um, and we're importing hops from all over the world. And on average, it takes 11 liters of water to make one liter of beer. So it's a hugely wasteful industry. And if we want both the industry itself to be sustainable for the world and indeed to be financially sustainable, that's got to change, right? You know, we, we need to campaign about these issues. We need to spread the word. Uh, we, we need to educate people um, on these issues also. And, you know, we've got to be welcoming to change. We, we shouldn't just say it's too hard to change, you know, like we've all got to make hard choices these days. And, you know, it's not easy to revolutionize stuff. It's not easy to make things better. It's easier to go along with the status quo, but that's not what that, that's not what's needed. Um, and you know, in terms of sustainability and waste, we've really got to consider buying more local. Absolutely. So buying buying local and particularly buying breweries that use local ingredients is the absolute best way that you can make a difference here and to champion those breweries that do it well as well. Like lots of people think that societal change involves lots of negative negativity, lots of accusations. If there's one thing you can do to help the craft beer industry, it's champion the people that are doing these things right. Um, so yeah, we're totally, totally open to your suggestions as well. So if you've got any ideas of stuff we could do better, whether it's, you know, not slagging off breweries, whether it's getting more people of colour involved, whether it's uh, championing sustainability, let us know in the comments. We're also going to do lots more short form educational content as well. We don't want to reveal too much yet, but we're gonna try. We've seen this incredible rise in people buying online, buying independent, buying local, because that's what was accessible during lockdown. And we're gonna create lots of content to try and keep those people in our lovely bubble. Come and join us, guys. We're gonna have a party together. Uh, it's gonna be great, Johnny. I'm very excited for the next year, even though it all seems doom and gloom, but you know what? Through hardship comes change, and uh, you know, great things could come out of this. You never know. That's almost the same. What's the one you're going through there? Through, I think it's through great hardship comes great change, something like that. So that's sort of our plan for the rest of 2020 and going forward. And we are totally open to hearing more suggestions, so please put them below. But otherwise, you know, buy ethically, be welcoming, don't trash people online. And what was the final one? Oh, yeah, don't believe the hype. <laughs>